Hey guys, Happy New Year's. If you're watching this video, then you're probably one of the uh, people who pre-ordered a physical copy of Stone Rift Thunder Dwarves of Aranoth from AbsoluteTabletop.com. First off, I want to thank you guys again for your support and your patience as uh, we embark on this journey of offering physical book pre-orders for the very first time. So far, it's gone pretty smooth. Um, we submitted our proof for the book. Uh, last week and today, uh, the day before New Year's Eve, the book arrived on my doorstep. This is the proof copy, so the book that you're looking at right now may not reflect the final physical product that will be showing up on your doorsteps here very soon, but this is pretty damn close. It looks really good, very happy with the quality of the cover as well as the text on the spine. I don't see any obvious issues with anything uh, thus far, but I thought it might be cool to give you guys a little bit of a New Year's treat and flip through the book a bit to give you a preview of what you're going to be seeing here very soon. Uh, this is not something that we're going to share around. This is just for people who have the pre-order, so I hope you guys enjoy. So we're just going to flip through here, look at some of the pages, maybe talk about some of the things that I see. The uh, next step in this process is that I'm going to be looking through this book with uh, a magnifying glass. Not literally, but almost literally. Uh, I'm going to be looking for any sort of issues uh, that jump out to me with the print, with the readability, with the flow of the book, and then we will make the necessary changes and resubmit. But best case scenario, this is our final proof. We're happy with it, and uh, we make them available to you guys and ship them off to you as soon as possible. So the first thing I noticed right away is that uh, James Carney uh, did an awesome job uh, establishing our margins, our new margins. If you own a copy of the Convocation, you might notice that the, uh, that the map of Aronoff gets a little lost in the gutter here. Uh, the reason for that is, uh, you know, we s establish our gutters so that uh, we can have a full bleed uh, but we don't take into account that, you know, the gutter here is not to the edge of the margin. You know, the art can tend to disappear in the fold of the page. But what James did is he set up inside margins for us that make sure that things like maps aren't lost in the gutter. So when you open it and you open it flat, you see the full map, the beautiful John Pintar map of Stone Rift here. So very happy with how that turned out. Um, right off the bat, I am super pleased with how the new page designs uh, that Tim Carney did look on the page. They look so clean and they have such a nice sort of open, breathable quality. The pages feel very open. They feel very easy to read. Um, the backgrounds have been lightened considerably. There's not as much texture to the pages. At the same time, they still look gorgeous. Um, and I love just the little the little flourishes here, the little touches on the pages. I think we've struck a really good balance between uh, making the books feel thematic, making them feel like they're tomes, but also making them still very readable both on the page and on the screen. And we've taken a lot of time and effort to make sure that the text and the page designs and the art all work in tandem to create a really, really readable uh, awesome experience. So everything looks good here. Let's flip through some more. The art by Emily looks absolutely gorgeous. She did an amazing job with the Dwarven profile art. The timeline, lovingly crafted by our very own Tim Carney. I'm really, really happy with the way that the text looks. The text is considerably smaller than in our previous books, but it's still so, so readable. And uh, the pages look a lot less cluttered to me. There's the Lightning Weird, another piece of art by our own Tim Carney. I'm happy that the dark, uh, the darker breakout boxes are still very, very readable. The white text doesn't feel harsh. Feels really good. More awesome art by both Emily Kruger and John Pintar. We've also made an effort to not shy away from text-heavy pages, um, having pages that don't have art on them 
Um, you know, even uh, you know, Wizards of the Coast uh, Paizo books have pages with just text, and it's okay to take a break and not have art on every single page. So. Sentinel Gates. I love this roll table. Really good for creating puzzles and challenges for your players. Another piece of Tim Carney art, the Blackstone Golem. Really love how that turned out. There's some John Pintar item art, Emily Kruger Dwarven busts. Some more John Pintar item art. our trinkets table. Then we get into the stat blocks, which is another thing that we, um, we completely changed this time around. The text, the uh, stat blocks are actually all in the text. Um, these are not their own boxes. They're not their own objects. These are actually in line with the text. Even these vertical lines are part of the text, which means that if we change anything actually inside the text, the vertical lines will shift with the text, which is really, really nice. Um, these stat blocks were um, really, really time consuming to design. Um, I know they don't look it, they look very simple, very clean, but it took a long time to make the text work and create the different elements that we needed. Um, but I'm really happy with the way that they turned out. I think they're a lot easier to read and they look a lot nicer on the page. Uh, what I'll do here at the end is I'll, I'll, I'll grab my copy of the convocation and you can see uh, just how different everything looks. Is the lightning weird? This was our first attempt at a full page stat block. You'll notice the text goes all the way across. I really like how it turned out. I think that looks really neat. And for bigger stat blocks, it's very handy to be able to have that, uh, that width uh, to be able to work with. Yeah, all the stat blocks look great. Very, very happy with that. This page looks a little dark, but I'm actually okay with that. This page was a bit of a nightmare uh, when it comes to ink density. Uh, ink density is the amount of ink on the page. Uh, if you have too much ink, too much saturation, too many dark colors, um, it creates a problem with the printer. The ink can actually smear as it's being printed, and so you have to do a special process where you, um, essentially, you limit the amount of ink on the page. Uh, not unlike using like a limiter enhancer if you're, or like a compressor if you're an audio engineer. Very, very similar to that process, but you're doing it, you know, visually on the page. Um, and it actually makes makes for um, a little bit uh, more subtle uh, colors in the art, which I, I, I sort of appreciate. So they look better on the screen as well. All of these amazing uh, weapons and items were done by John Pintar. He did a great job. His art is just really prevalent throughout this book. Now we have the Adventure into the Rift, which features some gorgeous maps by our friends over at Heroic Maps. There's some there. The maps themselves, you can actually uh, buy and download them full size and print them off yourself, and uh, they will be on full one-inch uh, grids for use with miniatures. There's some more Heroic Maps there. Here's a large one of the repository, which is my favorite one that they did for us. They created these maps specifically for Stone Rift. It's really, really fun to work with them. Uh, they're great. There's another darker page, but again, I think it looks great. I think the white text uh, contrasts really nicely. It's very easy to read. Here's another first for us, a little page sort of uh, plugging some of our other books, sort of, you know, if you enjoyed this book, maybe check out some of the other books. And then there's our blank page with the ISBN there. Okay, so that looks really good. Let me um, grab my copy of the Convocation here. This is my old proof copy of the Convocation, but the page design is still the same. So we're just going to open to, uh, let's look at a stat block and compare it to um, a stat block here. So you'll notice right off the bat that um, the art, the sort of artistic page design elements come a lot further down the page and take up a lot more room. The text is quite a bit larger and the stat blocks are more stylized. But I would say that overall, looking between these two pages, 
that this is cleaner, more readable without losing the sort of thematic, uh, cool kind of uh, sort of almost antique sort of feel that we're going for in these books. And you'll notice too that the art is very, very dense on this page. You know, we have something kind of ghosting in the background here with a bit of transparency. We have art here, but looking over here, you know, we, we've we let everything breathe. We're not afraid of the negative space um, and we're using it to our advantage. And in fact, you know, being very conscious of letting the pages breathe, letting them be open, letting them be readable. So yeah. All right, guys. So that's really cool. Very, very happy. Just flipping through it, I didn't notice anything off the bat uh, that struck me as um, needing revisions. Again, I'll go through it with a fine tooth comb and make sure that there's no changes that need to be made. And uh, if there's not, these books will be shipping to you very shortly. If there are revisions, we'll do another round of uh, proofs, which could take another couple of weeks. But we'll be sure and uh, send out another newsletter and let you guys know uh, the status uh, as soon as we know. So hoping to get you guys these books uh, here in the new year. I hope that everyone had a very happy holiday. Again, thank you for all of your support and your patience. Um, we just we're really, really excited to be offering physical books. And uh, it's becoming more and more of an efficient, painless process for us, uh, which is which is always good. So happy new year to everyone. Uh, glad tidings in 2017. And um, to the rift we go.